The Lord is gracious. Jesus Christ is risen and he is the Prince of life. He is the Prince of life. We have been looking at Jesus, the Prince of life. And we have been coming to you from Acts chapter 3, verse 13 to 16. My God. And in this text, which we will break down, we have been looking at the fact that Peter standing up in verse 15, he said, and kill the Prince of life whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Peter, the apostle, my Lord, who denied Jesus, became one of the chief witnesses of Jesus, the Prince of life. Come on, put our hands together and give God praise because he is risen. The Prince of life has conquered death, my God. And even though he was killed, God raised him from the dead. And Peter was saying, we are witnesses. And today, through the grace of God, I can say, I am a witness because Jesus Christ is living in me. So we have been talking about the Prince of Life and this is part, part five. And just in case you miss the other parts, I want you to go back over them. Just go on YouTube and go over the, the last four amazing points. We have looked at Jesus, the Prince of Life. And a prince is a ruler of nations and the seat of authority. And Jesus is the Prince of Life. Jesus is the source and sustainer of natural life and spiritual life. He is the Lord who is the Lord of heaven and earth and everything under the earth. Hallelujah. We can celebrate. Come on, put your hands together. We can celebrate our Prince today. Our Prince is risen just as he said my lord in colossians 1 15 15 to 30 to, to 20 we are establishing the authority of our prince right here we are establishing the authority of our prince my lord jesus i remember um recently the the, the prince was coming through our country and there was so much preparation that was made my god and we know that our prince is risen as a matter of fact he is prince yet he is king my god because he paid the price and he entered he entered into the joys of his father's kingdom and so he today reigns as the prince of life he is let's let's look at some of the attributes of this awesome prince colossians 1 15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Talk about our authority. Whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him talking about our prince the prince of life all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things hallelujah and by him all things consist our prince of life he is before all things he was with our father his father in creation he was the, the one to which the father said, let us make man. We continue to look at the attributes and the authority of our prince. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. And, 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 and in this season, we stop and we look at how our prince suffered for us but it was at the will of his father. My God, men are just, 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 just playing their part because of the evil that's in their heart. 
But verse 19 says, For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, and having made peace with the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. I say, whether they be in earth or in heaven, my God, this is the authority of the Prince of Life. The Prince of Life came to earth, and when he came, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Can you imagine? All of Israel looked forward to a coming Messiah, one who would change the whole system, yet they did not expect him to come the way he did. And so they crucified the Lord of glory. He was crucified, laid behind a stone. He lived to die. Hallelujah. It's like a rose trampled on the ground. He took the fall and thought of us above all. And so we have been looking at the Prince of Life and we're again looking at the context of that scripture. Acts 3 verse 13 to 16. Paul gives this background before highlighting one of the most awesome names of Jesus, the Prince of Life. And this name, Prince of Life, comes to you right now. Hallelujah. It is an operative name. That means you're watching right now, wherever you are from, wherever, what time, whatever time of day you're watching, Jesus comes to you as the Prince of Life. It, it doesn't matter what situation you're going through. He understands life. He was touched with all the feeling he's touched with all the feelings of our infirmities because he was tempted in all points like we are so he understands what you're going through right now and he wants to come into your world with his life the god of abraham and isaac and of jacob the god of our fathers we're talking about the context in which peter called jesus the prince of life has glorified his son whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But he denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and kill the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name have made this man strong whom you see and know yes the faith which is by him has given this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So the context of this story, hallelujah, is Peter going down, hallelujah, to the temple. And Jesus, they have lived with Jesus. He has discipled them for three and a half years. And, and Jesus has gone back to heaven. My God, and there is this man sitting hallelujah he was he was lame my god and he wanted arms because he was a beggar when people have a spirit of poverty they see man as their source so this man had a spirit of poverty my god i'm speaking to someone now you have a spirit of poverty you're always looking to men to take care of you god wants to shift you today to get rid of that spirit of poverty where you see him as your source. And the Lord just, just spoke to me right now. You can be rich and have a spirit of poverty because you're not rich towards God. And you're looking at your goods and think that it is the multiplication of your goods that is causing you to prosper. But unless you can see God as your source, you will not be able to entertain him as the prince of life the Prince of Life is the one that causes men to lay up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor, 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 moth nor thieves can, can, can destroy. My God. And so guess what? So Peter speaking in this situation, he highlights the fact that men chose Barabbas over Jesus. My God. Barabbas was a thief who, who, who they brought out. And the masses chose Barabbas. They rejected Jesus and chose Barabbas. Why did they do that? 
Because humans by nature, my God, are evil and sinful. My God, John 3 verse 19 speaks of this condemnation. Because it's a condemnation why people would choose unrighteous people over righteous people. My God. And this is the condemnation. There is a condemnation in the world. That light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. So there are times as a son of God, God will allow unrighteous people to be chosen over you. Hallelujah. Because some of the people that they choose, just like Barabbas, was full of darkness. And men would choose him over those who have the light of God. One, because they're blind, they cannot see the light. And two, their deeds are evil. But guess what? When you're a child of God and you're walking in purpose, nothing happens to you by chance. And therefore, it must, it may have looked like a win-win when the crowds who benefited from Jesus' miracles, from his fish and his bread, and from the many stories that he told and the three and a half years where the masses followed him. It may have looked like a losing situation when they cried out for Barabbas. But God has never lost a battle. Guess what? If Jesus were to, to speak into a microphone or speak into that crowd, knowing the will of God, he would say, free Barabbas and take me. You know why he would say that? Because he realized that Barabbas being freed, my God, has a, have a chance to be saved. My God, but him being the author of life, he knew that he had to face death. My God, and therefore he would have been willing if by choice he would have chosen, he would still have chosen to go because he had already prayed that prayer. Lord, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So men will always choose darkness than light because their deeds are evil. And that is what they did. They chose Barabbas. But guess what? Principalities and powers were, 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 were happy and excited when men chose Barabbas. My God. Because they didn't understand the mystery of Christ. They didn't understand that Jesus had prophesied of his death saying, unless a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abide and load. But if it, uh, if it, if it dies, it bear forth much more fruit. He was speaking of his life. He, if he would die as that one grain, very soon there'd be much more grains, many, many, many millions of grains in the earth. And so he chose to die. My God, my Lord, him who was my God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he was who was the conquering line of the tribe of Ju Judah, he was the word. Jesus, the Prince of Life, stepped into the world as the Word. So he knew who he was. My God, and you can imagine how baffled the people were because they were carnal-minded, they were fleshy-minded, they revered Abraham. My God, and he was stepping into time and he was speaking to them. He was saying, before, before Abraham was, I am. He was saying things like, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. He was the word that had stepped into time as the prince of life. And he came as the word knowing that it is the spirit that quickened, because the flesh profits nothing. So he was saying to them, the, the flesh doesn't profit anything. It is the spirit that gives life. And the words that I am speaking to you, because I am the prince of life, these words can give you life. So he was saying, all the words that I'm giving you can give you life. But above and beyond that, I am the way. I am the truth. I am life itself. So the word was coming to them. The prince of life is the word that God used to raise up the people who would be a part of the church. The prince of life was the word. Hallelujah. He was the author of eternal salvation. He is now the ruling prince who comes to you where you are. As a matter of fact, he gave his life for you. 
And this is what he's saying to the world. Come on, listen. Stop and share this message with as many as you can. Because Jesus is the author and sustainer of natural life and spiritual life. And hear him stepping into the world and hear him. Hear the spirit of the Lord because I heard him speaking in my spirit. James 4 verse 14. He is looking at natural man. And he knows that natural life cannot sustain them. Listen to the spirit of life. Listen to the prince of life. Hear him speaking to us. Hear the prince of life speaking. Hallelujah. Whereas you know not what. Don't take any thought. Right? Don't take any thought. For tomorrow. Right? For what is your life? Don't take any thought. Whereas you know not what will be tomorrow. You don't know what's going to be tomorrow. For what is your life? It is as vapor that appears for a little time and then vanished away. What is a vapor? It's a gas. It's particles of moisture or substance suspended in air and is invisible as the clouds, like a puff of smoke. Medical persons will tell you when someone is dying, you can, you can hear them expire, that final breath that goes out. My God, God says, that's your life. It's like vapor. In another context, he says, you are like grass. In the morning, you are green. But in the evening, you are withered away. Hallelujah. He says, man is like grass. But here he's speaking of our life as a vaporous gas. That's what your life is like. Natural life is as a vapor with a puff and it's gone. And you know the Lord has used two deaths recently to open my eyes to the reality of what natural life is. It's as a vapor. And all of us will expire one day because our natural life is like vapor. And in the first death, I saw how anger can rest in the bosom of a fool and how the devil will use man like you use Cain to kill Abel. My God. And then after you have, you have, you have committed that act, your eyes come open and you have committed an act that cannot be reversed. Hallelujah. Because the person that you hated so much, their vapor expired. My Lord. The Lord has also opened my eyes to several persons. This is the second case. Who are losing their lives over material things. My God. Yet Jesus, this Prince of Life, comes and he gives us the biggest tip. He says... Lay up treasures in heaven where thieves cannot break through and steal and moth cannot corrupt. For where a man's heart is, there is his treasure. There are many people today who are in prison or who have lost their lives fighting for material gain. Your life is a vapor. That's why you came into time and you were supposed to exchange this vapor the prince of life comes to you to exchange this vaporous life which has a time stamp and to pick up eternal life the zoe life the god kind of life now we see jesus coming and he's saying he's telling us in luke 12 verse 15 he is giving us a very powerful thing to consider about life. Luke 12 verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. Hallelujah. 
you have multi-billionaires. I remember recently, sometime last year, one billionaire uh, went into a ship and the ship went under and he lost his life. My Lord, millionaires and billionaires, they have to go. Some of them are making wills to their, their cats and their pets. Hallelujah. And, and, and are storing up millions in the bank and hiding it in different accounts where even their wives don't know. God says, take heed. Beware of covetousness. I am not measuring your life by what you possess. I'm measuring your life by whether or not you allowed me to exchange that vaporous life to give you my life. I'm not impressed with the rich. You know, the scripture speaks of the last days of James, the brother of Jesus, saying rich men are going to howl for their mystery, for their, for their misery, because their, 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 their wealth is moth eaten, eaten up. In other words, my God, God tells us that there's a time coming in his kingdom where the wealth of the wicked will be laid up for the righteous. God says, I'm not impressed with your wealth. Your life is not consistent in the abundance of things that you possess. And this is what he steps into time. And Jesus steps into time and he will tell you, I'm choosing the poor who are rich in faith towards me. You know what's God's currency for your life? The currency that he respects? Faith. He's chosen the rich who are poor in spirit and rich towards God. He's chosen, he has chosen the poor who are rich in faith. And so the power of the resurrection is here. Jesus, the Prince of life, God has raised him up. My God, let's look at a prophecy of this awesome resurrection in the book of Isaiah 25, verse 8. I just bless God for my beloved father. I heard him preach this scripture and it is sticking to my spirit like super glue. He is speaking of the Prince of Life and God's prophecy through Isaiah, the same one. Isaiah was that eager-eyed prophet who saw the Prince of Life and what he would do and what he would establish. As a matter of fact, all the prophets saw him. But I just like what Isaiah did, but how Isaiah puts it. Isaiah said, he will, Isaiah 25 verse eight, he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for the Lord has spoken it. This prophecy is speaking of the end, but it has an application that we saw full, being fulfilled later. The prince of life would swallow up victory my god he did it come on put your hands together and bless god he did it how do we know he did it first corinthians 15. how do we know the prince of life did it first corinthians 15 54 54 and 58 my lord the prince of life came to earth as a man he could have sinned he was tempted in all points. He had to choose daily. Now hear the testimony and the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 54 to 58. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass the saying that is written. Of course, this happens to every son of God who is born again and then who is my God to be resurrected. But in Jesus' life, the testimony comes. Death is swallowed up in victory. Remember Isaiah was saying he will swallow up death in victory. Now in 1 Corinthians 15, we see death is swallowed up into victory. 
And then you hear him, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is an angel. Death is a principality. Death is an enemy. And it's the last enemy that will be destroyed. Death and hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death will be cast into the lake of fire. Death is an angel that has, has, been, uh, has been allowed to work for a time. But it accomplishes the purposes of God. Because the wages of sin is death. And because Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world, it was legal for death to take him. Slow down. Let me tell you why Jesus conquered. There must, there needed to be a righteous offering for sin. There needed to be a righteous offering for sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ. Jesus became sin. He didn't just take on sin. He became sin for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He who knew no sin became, he became sin for us. All the sicknesses and diseases of the world were put on him. My God, I think we need to highlight that scripture. He who knew no sin because we really need to see that Jesus became sin. When the father looked on him, he did not see Jesus. He saw sin and death. He who knew no sin became sin for us. So it was illegal for death to take him. All sicknesses, all diseases were placed on him. He didn't know any of those, but he became sin. The Prince of Life became sin. Hallelujah. When you looked at him naturally, his visage would marred more than any man. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For he has made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be the righteous made we may be made the righteousness of God in him he took on sin he became sin he carried all the diseases his father couldn't look on him because he was sin he was the offering for sin but because his soul hallelujah hallelujah did not partake in the sin there's a law on the books that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He who was life came forth up from the grave he arose, a mighty triumph over his foe. He arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with the saints to reign. And that is why death could not hold him. So, oh, death. Where is your, uh, your, your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. My God, therefore, my beloved brethren, because of this reality, God says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know that your labor is not in vain. What then is the effect? of this branch this life the prince of life coming forth i tell you he is the sustainer and the source of this life and so he steps into time and he says to us john 15 he says to us i am life i am the vine you are the branches i am the vine you are the branches. I am the true vine. He's saying, let me back up. He said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband. Right? I am the true vine. The vine life. 
the life of the vine. My father is the husbandman. Then he goes on to say in the next verse, verse 2, Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bear fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. There is, it's very important that you abide in the prince of life's vine. He is the vine life. Without abiding in Jesus, you cannot bear fruit and you will not have meaningful spiritual life. There are consequences of not abiding in the vine. Backsliders, hear me. You are going to be um, cast out and withered. My Lord, why is this important? Because the Prince of Life is the sustainer of life. And when you were born again, he took your life. My God, my God. When you were born again, he put a law in your, in, in your favor. First of all, that law says, I am, I'm, I'm making everything new. I'm making body, soul, and spirit new. I make all things new. The only thing you have left is a memory of what you used to be. But your body is, is, is new because I'll change the governing preference of your body. I'll remove the law of sin and death. And I will, 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 um, I will install the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Romans chapter 8. I'll do that, says the Lord. And I'll make you a new, a new, a new creation filled with my life. I'll take your spirit. Colossians 6 verse 17. I will take your spirit and I will join it to my spirit. My God. That's the effect of the resurrection. The resurrection came so that we can be a part of the vine life of the life of the prince of life and he's showing us right now how is it that we can be effective he says for he that is joined to the lord is one spirit he takes your spirit the new spirit that he created because he destroyed the old one how do i know both ezekiel and isaiah prophet um the prophet prophesied I will take out the heart of stone. It cannot be fixed. The old heart cannot be fixed. The old spirit cannot be fixed. The old body cannot work. So I'll make all things new. Hallelujah. I will make all things new. And I'll take out the heart of stone. I'll put in a heart of flesh. And I will give you a new spirit. But it was Paul in Corinthians who tells us what God does with that new spirit. He puts that spirit in the Holy Spirit and they are joined to the Lord and they are one so that his life can flow through us. Being joined to the Lord means that being united with him, we have the same purpose, the same desires and the same emotions. All you have to do is abide in the vine. Hallelujah. God's resurrection assured us eternal life. That, and, and this eternal life is the inheritance of the sons. Because we are now made the righteousness of God. When you are joined to the Lord and you, you connect with that vine life every day. Do you know you feel like God feel about every situation? My God, you see a robber and they are killing the robber. And everybody is killing the robber. But guess what? You have compassion on that robber. Because you know that God can change him and raise him up. You have the emotions of the spirit. My Lord. But let's look at some oppositions to this vine life. To the prince of life having full sway in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 The pride of life. 1 John 2 verse 16. 1 John 2 verse 16. 1 John 2 verse 16. The pride of life. This is Jesus. He says, guess what? Your life is vapor. Give me your life. Because I'm telling you all the things that are in the world. The loss of the flesh. The loss of the eyes. The pride of, the li of life. It is not of the Father. It is of this world. This world. The governing princes of the world, the evil forces of the world. He says that's all that is in the world. Hallelujah. We do not have to be ruled by pride of life as that, as that the old man 
with the his desires that is the old man with his desires for status and earthly possessions that was put off at salvation as believers we are no longer snared by the desires of the flesh but we are free to serve god and his people our bodies were made instruments of righteousness and so God says we must be abiding in Jesus, being joined to, the, joined to the Lord and abiding in Him avoids us from walking in the pride of life. Because when we are joined to the Lord and we are connected to divine life every day and we are in His word, we will walk in the perfect way of God, seeking His will. We will not walk with, by, with the satanic wisdom that is earthly and sensual and devilish. We will walk inside of the wisdom that is from above, that is pure and peaceable and of a good fruit. The testimony of wisdom will come from our life. Hallelujah. And it will cause us to access the riches of God's glory. And we will trust the Father with what he has a portion for us. Do you know that God has determined the amount of material wealth that you should have? And if you go outside of the boundaries of his will to get it because you're walking in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life, it will take you off course. That is why God wants you to be focused. He wants hallelujah, your eyes to be single because when your eyes are single, your whole body will be full of light. Right now, there are people that the Prince of Life wants to step into your world. But there's a law on the book. If you walk in pride, he has to abase you. If you walk in unforgiveness, so pride is the second opposition. Hallelujah. Pride is when you are saying in your heart, I'll do it my way. Unforgiveness is one thing that can block the Prince of Life from stepping into your world right now. It isn't worth it. I saw two persons lose their lives recently because of unforgiveness. One of them, his time clock was ticking, his time stamp was there, and he didn't know, and he refused to give up the unforgiveness against someone, hallelujah, and died in his wrath. Another thing, the third thing is fear. If you really walk in fear, you really cannot love. Jesus stepped into the world, and he said, my God, he came in him was life and the life was the light of men if you do not embrace the prince of life you won't have any light and today i'm i'm i'm, I'm sharing with you with all the passion in my heart all the wisdom that god has put to put this together hallelujah and he is saying to you i'm coming to you as the prince of life death could not hold him he conquered death death and the grave my god because this prince of life walked in victory it qualified him to ascend to the hill of the lord come on sons of god be excited because you can imagine how principalities and powers were having a field day. We crucified Jesus, my God. They, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and praise him. My God. Because when they crucified him, blood and water came from his side. His vision was marred more than any other man. The prince of life, hallelujah, when he was on the cross, even when he was in so much pain, he was ministering, hallelujah, to the thief. He was saying, come on, come on, today you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah, he was in so much pain. He was naked, he was mocked, he was being mocked. He, was, he, he had been scourged, but yet he had time to look down at the foot of the cross and say hallelujah to his beloved um, son in the Lord, John, come on, take Mary home. Take my mother home with you. He cared about his mother even in his dying moment because Joseph had died by then. My God. But as soon as he satisfied the law, hallelujah, and as soon as his, his righteous blood, hallelujah, paid the price, 
My God, he came up from the grave. But even before he went in the grave, look at the effect of his life. My God, the scripture says, hallelujah, there was an earthquake and, and, and the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, signifying that there was a new way, a new way to God. The dispensation had changed. There was a new and living way by the blood of Jesus Christ. My God, the Prince of Life created a new and a living way. My God, the Prince of Life created a, a, a life gate so that all may come in. My God, the Prince of Life knew that the flesh profits nothing, but it is the spirit that gives life. And he knew that his words would bring spirit and life. Hallelujah. And so this Prince of Life went into hell. And my God, he was tormented in hell. He paid the price for sin in hell. But guess what? Because he was righteous, he came out of that grave. And look at the effect in Jerusalem. My God, no hallelujah. My God, can you imagine when he got up, the righteous dead got up with him. Can you imagine what it looked like? When so many righteous dead were walking around, walking around Jerusalem. My God, can you imagine the upstar in the city when they saw the old patriots walking up and down in the city? My God, my Lord, can you imagine that Jesus stayed with them 40 days after? He ate bread and fish with them. My God, can you imagine how principalities and powers quake? No wonder the scripture said, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But my God, because he paid the righteous price, can you hear, hallelujah, the testimony in the spirit? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart. Hallelujah. And can you hear the testimony? My God, open up the gates. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Death had lost his power and he ascended. My God, who is the king of glory? Hallelujah. Can you put up that scripture for me, please? Who is the king of glory? Because the prince of life was the king of glory. He laid his life. My God. And there was a testimony because he paid the price. He ascended. And when he ascended high on high, he gave. He led captivity captive. My God, he had given his life for the rebellious. When he ascended, he gave gifts to men. My God, the Prince of Life left gifts for men. But look at the Prince of Life who was ascending as the King of Glory. My Lord, hear the testimony, Psalms 24 verse 8. This is the Prince of Life who paid the price for sins. And now he's ascending. And hear the testimony in heaven. Who is the king of glory? Can you go up to the, 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 the verse 6 for me? Let's put this in context. My God, this is a generation of them that seek him, that seek his face, old Jacob. Hallelujah. There is a generation that seek his, that will seek his face. Jesus was that 42nd generation, his generation. My God, the prophets prophesied that here, here Isaiah, who is going to declare his generation? He will see his seed. How can a man who is going to be cut off see his seed? But guess what? We are the generation of Jesus Christ. We came down as the 42nd generation of Jesus Christ. We are the generation that will seek him, that will seek his face. And so verse 7 picks it up and goes on to say, Hallelujah, hear the testimony in heaven. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. My God, because this man paid the price of sin, and let the King of glory come in. And hear the testimony in verse 8. Who is the King of glory? Hallelujah. The testimony of our princes, the Lord, hallelujah, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. My God, verse 9, hallelujah. The Lord strong in in, 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 hallelujah. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. 
Lift them up, the everlasting doors, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. My God, verse 10, hallelujah. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the King of glory, the Lord of hosts, the Prince of life was the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. The King of Glory. So here our Prince comes. Let me just share briefly with you a little testimony from my life. If you want to know God, you must position yourself to hear the word of God. God says he fills the hungry with good things. And I've always prayed, Lord, empty me of anything. I want to be filled up with your word. And anything that he said, get rid of, I get rid of it. Get rid of those photos, gone. Get rid of those friends, gone. Get rid of that movie, go. Everything, go. Because I'm making room for the king. Hallelujah. And God has asked for some treasured things. I remember him asking for my silver literal silver asking for my gold asking for my china my crystals whatever it is asking us for whatever it is just go asking me for what i believe was my rights and so if you have a loss for rep reputation retribution if you have a loss for authority a loss for preeminence my god i remember one time we're in a voting situation and I had the most votes. And God said, step down and give your votes to this person. Hallelujah. There are many times that God would say, write this for so, such and such and put their name on it. He, he would just give me things and say, write anonymous. Give this person this money and, don't, and send it to somebody and let them know. Don't know. Because what? In your life, he is the prince of life. And he wants to serve through you. He wants to serve the world through you. My God. And so if you want the Prince of Life to rule through your life, get in a fresh impact ministry like this one, an apostolic ministry where the fivefold ministry is in operation. Hallelujah. You have, you're getting the influence of the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors and the evangelists. Hallelujah. Those persons who are pouring into our lives, we are pouring that in you. Let the word stick in your heart like yeah, Pastor Andrew said yesterday, white on rice. It's inseparably. Once, once, once he comes into your life, get a passion for the word. Find the apostolic sources of truth and stick to them. Cut out anything out of your spiritual diet that doesn't glorify God. The Prince of Life is a pure Prince. Hallelujah. He's turned away. He works. The Holy Spirit works with him. And he's turned off by sin. Once he sees that you're repentant though, he'll roll up his sleeve and, and come and get you wherever you are. But he is repelled by sin. My God. And unless you're willing to repent, he will resist you. Because that is pride. And he says, he gives grace to the humble. But he resists the proud. Allow the word of God to have an effectual work in your heart. Let the prince of life carry you. If you are going through a situation where you are, you are feeling guilty about an abortion. Hallelujah. If you are hooked on drugs. If you have stole some money. If, you are, if, if, if right now you are, you, you are in hiding because you have homosexual tendencies. And you love your same gender. If you are hooked on pornography. If you are hooked on masturbation. Hallelujah. If you have murdered someone, hallelujah. Whatever sin that you have done, hallelujah. If you are sick right now, the Prince of Life is a healer. The Prince of Life is a deliverer. Hallelujah. If you are bound by demonic forces, hallelujah. The Prince of Life, when he steps into your world and he's stepping into your world right now, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Holy Spirit, fall on your knees. Lift up your hands to Jesus right now. The resurrected Savior, hallelujah, is in the room with you right now. And we rebuke demonic spirits. 
Hallelujah. We curse spirits of cancer and sugar diabetes. In the name of Jesus, the Prince of Life is touching you from the crown of your head to the very sole of your feet right now. In the name of Jesus. And he says, if you order, if you, if you if from this day, you order your conversation or your lifestyle aright, I will show you my salvation. Come on, come on. He says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord, the Prince of Life, Hallelujah, the commander in chief, the captain of the host of the Lord, the mighty one. Anyone who calls on him shall be delivered. Begin to call Jesus from your belly bottom, wherever you are. Begin to cry out to him. He is the prince of life. Hallelujah. We have come to you from the eternal church of Jesus Christ, the record. Hallelujah. We are coming with a testimony of the church of Jesus Christ, the weakness of all current day and latter day apostles and prophets in the world and we are saying through this conveyor belt hallelujah that is attached to the throne of grace we are saying hallelujah embrace the prince of life hallelujah he'll get you he'll get you rid of strife and envy and anxiety and fear hallelujah and anger my god fall on your knees fall on your knees and repent and well hallelujah and when you feel that release begin to worship hallelujah the prince of life says I am a king. I'm giving you the recipe to come to me. Hallelujah. Come into my gates with thanksgiving and come into my courts with praise. Right now, begin to look in your life. It doesn't matter how dark your life is. Look in your life. Hallelujah. Look in your life and begin to thank me for something. I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to repeat this because I want you to hear it at the frequency in which Christ is saying it. The Prince of Life comes to you right now and he's saying, I am a king. Hallelujah. Enter my gates with thanksgiving and into my courts with praise. Hallelujah. Fall on your knees. Hallelujah. And if you need to repent, come on. Tell me, uh, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. I'll make you white as snow. I want to wash you. I want to make you clean. Hallelujah. I want you to discover your career, but I also want you to discover your calling. I am come. I am the Prince of Life, and I am come to give you life, life more abundantly, the North kind of life, the God kind of life, the Zoe kind of life. So take my hand. I'm stretching my hands to you. Don't be like Israel, that God says all day long, we shout to you with an outstretched hands, but you are stiff naked, ne ne stiff naked. God comes to you. The Prince of Life comes to you, and he says, take my hand let me lead you let me lead you let me take away your vaporous life the prince of life comes to you today and he says what is your life it's a vapor let me take your kind of life that natural life that has a time stamp let me take that natural life that has a time stamp let me exchange it and give you my life, my abundant life, my Zoe kind of life, my life. And if you abide in me and you allow my word to abide in you, hallelujah, your life, hallelujah, will be Christ's life. And you'll be able to say, when Christ, who is my life, appears, I will appear with him in glory. That is what the Prince of Life comes to you with today the prince of life says to you come on i'm saying it again for a reason the prince of life is coming to you today and he's saying your life is vapor is as a vapor give it to me it has a time stamp i want to give you my abundant life i want to give you the god kind of life the zoe kind of life i want to take your life and put your life in my life hallelujah and i want to give you a purpose i want to cause you to fulfill your calling and your career and to live it out with purity and guess what i want you to be able to say at the end of your days christ is my life hallelujah and he is appearing in glory and i am with him so take his life today take his abundant life the prince of life says take my abundant life because the abundant life that i give you is eternal life that started in god 
and end in God. And you know, anything that end and start in God is a continuous cycle because he is the beginning and the end. So you will have life forever. God bless you. I love you. Prince of life. The Prince of life. Go through life with him. I love you. See you next time.